worthy, and we are giving grown-ups the chance to win $1 million. All they have to do is prove that they are smarter than a fifth grader. It is that easy. And this is our class. Kyle! because our special guest is Lara, who is co-starring in a new Fox show called Back to You. But tonight, she came back just for us. Nice to have you back, Lara. All right, class, you ready to meet our new student? Yeah! He's a 26-year-old accountant who graduated from the Holy Name of Jesus Catholic School. Please welcome Eric Moore. I'm doing pretty great. Pretty How are you? Pretty good, pretty good. Now, I know you, you, your name is Eric, but you like to go by E. Yeah, I go by E. So you attended Holy Name of Jesus Catholic School. Holy Name of Jesus. Oh, There's wow. There's a picture of Whoa, you. you got me. That's the 80s at its finest I'm right there. I'm telling you what. <laughs> I'm liking the shirt. Well, Chazzy shirt. That's know, really me. I know it's been a few years since you were at Holy Name of Jesus, but there's some people that are still there that had a little something they wanted to say to you. That's funny, y'all. Well, Eric, this is our class. They're going to be taking the same quiz as you. And actually, during the show, you can cheat off of them, and we're going to tell you how. So pick your first classmate, and let's get started. Ooh. Ladies first. I'm going to Alana. Alana, come on Alana, up here. Ready? Good luck, girl. Good luck. Thank you, thank you, thank you. How are you, Alana? Good. How are you? I'm doing good today. Let me tell you how our game works, Eric. On the board, we're going to put 10 subjects. They represent first through fifth grade. The first question you answer correctly is worth $1,000. If you make it to the 10th question, it is worth $500,000. If you answer all of these correctly, we're going to give you an opportunity to answer an 11th question. It's a great school question. If you get it right, you go home with $1 million. Million dollars. Now, if at any point the test gets to be too difficult, you can take the money that you have won up until that point. You can leave us. You can drop out of school. But before you leave, you got to promise me you will look into that camera and tell the world I am not smarter than a fifth grader. Okay. We got a deal. All right. Let's find out if Eric E. Moore is smarter than a fifth grader. <laughs> They're loving you, E. I'm trying, I'm trying. All right, I gotta ask you, do you have a strategy? Do you think maybe go for the harder ones first, the easy ones? What do you oh, think? Oh, no, I'm gonna I'm go with the class. We're doing this together. All right, so for $1,000, pick your first subject. We are going with first grade U.S. geography. First grade U.S. geography. All right, E. For $1,000, here's your first grade U.S. geography question. Which ocean borders the state of Georgia? Oh, goodness. <laughs> Which ocean borders the state of Georgia? I live in Georgia. I actually know one of these. <laughs> Alana, your 10-year-old classmate has locked in with her answer. Oh, OK, she has me. I'm going to go with Atlantic Ocean. Atlantic Ocean. Yes, Atlantic Ocean, and that is... That's Columbia. your answer, all right. <laughs> wow. You're right, you got $1,000. Yeah. Oh. 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 oh, wow. One down, one down. That's the quickest $1,000 you've ever made, definitely, isn't it? Definitely, definitely. 
All right, you got a thousand. Turn it into two thousand. Okay. Pick another subject, Pete. Ah, uh, another subject. First grade grammar. grammar. Uh, first, first grade, grade grammar. grammar. First grade grammar. Okay. For two thousand dollars, E. Here is the question. What is the common noun in the following sentence? I saw it in the city of Buffalo. What is the common noun in the following sentence? I saw it in the city of Buffalo. I will tell you this, having been to Buffalo will not help you with this answer. Noun, person, place, or thing. We're still rolling with that as a noun, I think so. Um, I told you during the course of the test that you could cheat off your classmates. Let me explain real quickly how that works. You have a peek, which means once during the game, you can peek at your classmates' paper. If you like their answer, you can go with it. If you don't like it, you can go with your own. You have a copy, which means you may copy their paper, but you have to take what they've written down. And you have one save, which means if you answer incorrectly, but they answer correctly, they save you, you get the money, we keep on rolling, okay? Okay. Alana is locked in with her answer. Uh, I like the eye. Um, I'm going with the eye. You sure? I'm sure. Okay. Now, you had a chance to walk out with $1,000. And I didn't take it. Maybe you should have used a cheat. When you were in school, in the holy name of Jesus Catholic school, and you had grammar on the report card. What kind of letters were in that? I usually got straight E's. Straight E's. Yeah. Right between a D and an F. Right between a D and an F. Is that how you got the nickname E? E, that's why yeah. they call me E. Two of the four of your classmates over here have the correct answer. Uh. Two of them don't. What is the common noun in the following sentence? I saw it in the city of Buffalo. You said I. Is it Buffalo? Eric, the answer is city. Oh. You see, a common noun is a noun that does not need to be capitalized. Oh, I need my classmate. Your one chance to stay is if Alana has city on her paper. If she does not, you leave us with nothing. May we please see what Alana answered. Alana said, the Eric, I am oh. so sorry. You walk out of here with nothing. Oh, all right. All right, all right. All right, Eric, well, remember the promise you made me at the start of the show? Yeah. Do me a favor, look into the camera and tell the entire world. I am not smarter than a first, second, third, fourth, or fifth grader. But you're a great guy. Good luck to you. Thank you. Thanks for being with us. All right. Take care. We'll be right back with a new student right after this. All right, let's meet our new student. She's a 37-year-old produce sales rep from Orlando, Florida. Please welcome Melanie Johnston. Hello, Melanie. How are you? Hi, thank you. Welcome to our show. Thank you. Now, growing up in Orlando, Florida, where did you attend elementary school? Well, actually, I didn't. I was born in Orlando, Florida, but my father was in the military, so I changed schools every three years. So oh, I wow. went to elementary so in Dayton, Ohio, and in Southern California. Picture of you when oh, you were in man. elementary school. <laughs> oh, you were cute Not then. <laughs> yeah, you're cute now. When you were in school, it says on the card your favorite subjects were spelling and PE. Mm-hmm. Well, right. yeah, because I'm a good speller, but I mean, I love sports. Right, I love competition and I love games and. Let's combine the two of those together. Okay. Spell gymnasium. <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> Do I get extra credit for No, that? no extra credit in this classroom. All right, all right, all right. All right, pick a classmate. These guys are going to help you during the quiz. Okay. I'm going to start with Alana. Alana, come on up here. Come on, Alana. Come on, baby. Let's do it. 
All right, Melanie, let me tell you how we play this game. If at any point the pressure gets to be too much, you can drop out of school. You can take the money that you've won up to that point. You can hit the button and say, I'm dropping out of school. You can go home with that money. But before you leave, you have to promise me you'll look into the camera and let everybody know I am not smarter than a fifth grader. Okay. We have a deal. I'll do that if I have to, but hopefully I won't have to. Let's find out if Melanie Johnston is smarter than a fifth grader. <laughs> There they are, Melanie, pick a subject. Okay. Let's try fourth grade U.S. history. Fourth grade okay. U.S. history. All right. All right. I like your spunk. You're taking a fourth grade question right off She's the bat. Yeah, okay. Well. <laughs> All right, here we go. Here is our $1,000 question. Who was the U.S. president immediately before Franklin Delano Roosevelt. Okay. Who was the U.S. president immediately before Franklin Delano Roosevelt? Your classmates taking a little time on this one. <laughs> she said she was good at it. She has locked in her answer. Okay. How are you feeling about this? Not so great. Hmm. I should have stuck with the first grade. But that's okay. I got a line Talk about what do you think? Do you, I mean? I think it's a tough one, you know? I don't really know my presidents and. Uh... Well, when was, when was FDR president? FDR was, uh, was uh, right after the depression, right? Frankie Delaron Rosa was gonna get us out of the depression. Sounds good. Mm-hmm. So right before that though, uh... let's see. I don't know who got us in the depression. <laughs> If you don't get this right, you're gonna be depressed. I mean, it's... It's our first question. Now, think about it. I have an idea of that it might be that maybe Franklin Delano Roosevelt served two terms, so maybe the one right before him was actually him. Is that possible? There's no trick questions on this show. <laughs> now, you have your cheats. You can copy her paper. You can peek at her paper. You can also guess if you're incorrect and she's correct, you stay on. I want to peek. She wants to peek. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Who was the U.S. president immediately before Franklin Delano Roosevelt? For $1,000, Alana said Abraham Lincoln. No, 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 I'm not liking that at all. Okay, you know what? I'm gonna just make up my own here. Okay. <laughs> By the way, when I was in school, I did that a lot on tests. Okay. I just made up my own. You're looking about as confident as a guppy in a shark tank. <laughs> people, people. James Madison. James Madison. I'm not getting a good response from these kids. You're wrong. No! You no. were only off by 150 years or so on that one. No. Your only hope right now is that Alana saves you. Before I tell you the right answer, let's see what the class said. Three out of four of the class oh, said Herbert Hoover. Good job, kids. Three out of the four of the class are right, Melanie. I'm sorry, it is Herbert Hoover. That's it. Well, that's not exactly it. Because remember the little promise we had right up front? Oh, no. I hate to make you do this. Truer words were never spoken. Let them hear it, Melanie. I am not smarter than a fifth grader. Thank you so much for playing with us. We'll be right back right after this. Welcome back to Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader? All right, you guys ready to meet our new student? Yeah. 
She's a 42-year-old sales rep from Buena Park, California, and she attended Emory Elementary School. Please welcome Linda Sipian. the show. Thank you. Now, now, who is this you brought with you today? Uh, well, some people have good luck charms, and I have Baba. Baba. Baba, yeah. He... Looks like you've had Baba for a little while. Oh, yeah. Baba, Baba has seen better days. How long have you had Baba? <laughs> Since I was born. Can I see? Can I hold sure, Baba? Sure, sure. But I, you, I have to get him back. <laughs> Baba, Baba smell smells a little gamey. <laughs> He All right, and here's a picture me. of you when you attended Emory Elementary. Oh, aren't you cute? <laughs> you are cute. Now, now, what age is this? I was in kindergarten. Kindergarten. You have a very serious look for a I kindergarten did, I did. student. Well, you know why? Because my mom had just had my hair cut, and I hated it short. Oh, you didn't so like it like this? I was kind of like mad. This? I was bitter. <laughs> I like it. Well, welcome to our class. Now, I have to tell you, these fifth graders are going to be taking the same quiz that you're taking, okay? Okay. And actually, you're going to be able to cheat off of them as the show goes Yay, along, all right? Thank so you. So pick a class. Classmate, and let's get started. Um, 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 let's see. Alana. Alana, come on up. Alana looks very smart. Hi. Hi, sweetie. Oh, nice to meet you. You're popular. This is your third time up here today. Thank you. All right, Linda. Are you ready? I'm ready. All right, I'm and let ready. me tell you, if any point during the game you feel like the pressure's too much, that you just want to take the money and run, you can. Okay. You can hit the buzzer, you can say, I'm dropping out of school, and the only thing you have to do for me before you yeah. leave is to look into the camera and tell the world I am not smarter than a fifth grader. <laughs> okay? Okay. All right, let's find out we'll if Linda Sipian is smarter than a fifth grader. <laughs> oh, wow. All right, Linda, pick a subject for $1,000. Well, I think I'm going to start with first grade civics. First grade <laughs> civics. For $1,000, our first grade civics question is, which of the following is a U.S. federal holiday? Arbor Day, Flag Day, or New Year's Day? Ooh. Holiday. Which of the following is a U.S. federal holiday? Arbor Day, Flag Day, or New Year's Day? Huh. I will tell you this, your classmate has locked in their answer. Oh, look at you. <laughs> well, if I'm not looking at it as U.S. federal holiday or national holiday, I would go with C, New Year's Day. That's my answer. You would go with C, C New, New Year's, Year's Day. Day. Okay. Walk in your answer. Go. You're right. You got a thousand bucks. Yay! All right, Linda, okay. you've got a thousand dollars. Pick another subject. Let's turn it into two thousand. All righty. Yeah, let's do. Okay. First grade science. First grade science. For two thousand dollars, here's the question. Yay. How many horns did the Triceratops dinosaur have on its head? Huh. How many horns did the Triceratops dinosaur have on its head? Hmm, that's a tricky question. I would think... Alana is locked in already. Well, she's a smarty, so I think my answer is three. Wow. <laughs> You were very confident about well, that one. Well, try is three. Three is right. That's how Yay! many he had on his head. You got $2,000. Yes. All right, Thank Linda. You. you have to pick another classmate. Thank a lot of must so return much. to the classroom. She was a smarty yeah. thing. How are you, Jacob? Not bad. All right, Linda. You got $2,000. You're playing for five. Pick <laughs> your next subject. Spelling! OK, my friends over here are saying spelling, so I'm going to take second grade spelling. Second grade spelling. spelling. Thank you. OK. We're going to give you the $5,000 second grade question. Love it. When we come back.
to Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader? Our contestant, Linda Sipian, has won $2,000. She's playing for $5,000. All right, Linda. You chose second grade spelling. Here is the question. What month comes last alphabetically? Oh, okay, I can get that. What month comes last alphabetically? All right, Jacob has locked in his answer. Now, you know during the course of the game, your classmates can help you. You have two cheats. You may peek at your classmates' paper, decide if you like their answer or not. If you don't like it, you can go with your own answer. And one time during the game, you can copy, which means you must take the answer that your classmate has written down on their paper, okay? Wow. And you have one save, which means once during the game, if you answer incorrectly, but your classmate at the podium has the right answer, you continue on. So how are you feeling about this? I believe it's September. You said September. <laughs> Can we see what the rest of the class said? September. <laughs> Guess what? Everybody's right. You got $5,000. Linda, you got five thousand. You're playing for ten thousand. Let's pick another subject. Geography. Um, they are yelling geography at me, and I can do geography, I think. Second grade yeah. geography. Second okay, grade I, geography. You, you have a little pattern here. You're kind of working your way up the ladder. All right. For ten thousand dollars, here's our second grade geography question. The country of Mexico is on what continent? The country of Mexico is on what continent? Jacob has locked his answer in. Oh, look at Jacob, so quick. Uh -huh. Does it make you nervous when they answer quickly? Yeah, because I have to think about it. Yeah. You know, I have to go, I mean, I kind of thought I knew the answer, but I have to think about all the possibilities. Because I believe the country of Mexico is on the uh, continent of North America. You believe the country of Mexico? <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> You believe the country of Mexico is on North America? I certainly do. You're right. Yay! You got $10,000. Yay! Jacob's got to take a seat. It's time to pick another classmate, Thank you Linda. Let's so take Kyle. Kyle, come on up, Kyle. Hey, Kyle. Hey, Betty. Nice to see you. Nice to see you, too. All right, Linda. You get this question right, no matter what happens the rest of the game, you're walking out of here with $25,000, okay? Yay! Yay! Pick a subject, so Linda. You get it right, right? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's one downfall of the game. You have to get it right. I have to get it right. We don't give money for wrong answers. <laughs> well, what are you good at? I'm good at um, history, astronomy, Social studies. Well, I'm thinking astronomy, because my dear friend to my left is good at that. So I'm going to say third grade astronomy. Third grade yes. astronomy for $25,000. Yes. Okay. Linda, here's the question. Right. What planet is the second closest to our sun? <gasps> Ooh, okay, second closest. Okay. What planet is the second closest to our sun? Your classmate Kyle has locked in. I know there's a way of memorizing this. I knew this. My very excellent mother just served us noodle pudding. Did you know that? Yeah. Okay. See, you that. Did it. Apparently, I did it. I'm the only guy in the class doesn't know the point. <laughs> if Mercury is the first closest, very Venus would be the second closest. Let me just check my work here. <laughs> One is second closest to our sun. My very excellent. Okay, so it is Venus. The answer is Venus. All right. <laughs> oh no, you're making a sad face. Why are you making a sad face? Did I miss because up? Because I told you you could leave here with $10,000. I know, but I thought my very excellent mother was going <laughs> to pull me through this. But, I, you know, when I give you the chance to walk with $10,000 and you don't take me up on it, I know, and you just go with your own answer, I know. 
of Venus based on what you remember well, about a poem that you had in elementary school. Yes, yes. And then you have the right answer, and I give you $25,000. We're playing for $50,000 right after this. We're back with Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader? Our contestant, Linda Sipian, has got $25,000. The great news is, no matter what happens the rest of the show, you're leaving here with at least $25,000. $25,000, Baba could actually get a little cosmetic surgery <laughs> and maybe get a nose. All right, Linda, pick a subject. Let's go for 50 grand. Okay, third grade health. Third grade, third grade health, health yes. for $50,000. Okay. Your third grade health question is, how many bones are in the typical adult human's body? 206? 306 or 406? Huh. How many bones are in the typical adult human's body? Your classmate Kyle has locked in. All right, you do have two cheats left. You've got your save left. You could walk away with $25,000. To be honest with you, I don't know if it's exactly 206, but I know a baby has like 300 and something and I know some of them grow together, which would mean it was less than 306, so it has to be around 206. You see my thinking? Is that making sense? <laughs> I'm just thinking about a bucket of chicken right now. <laughs> a bucket of chicken. You have got me so totally confused. <laughs> I... Bucket of chicken sounds good, doesn't it? <laughs> Who wants to go get a bucket of chicken? <laughs> Linda's got $25,000. We can buy a lot of chicken. You want to just leave school and go get chicken? I would love to, because this is, this is scary. You want to quit the okay. game? No, I don't. For $50,000, your answer is? I'm going to guess A206. <laughs> we'll tell you this. That is the same thing Kyle said, so he can't save you. Oh, but he's smart. Nobody's smart. <laughs> you said 206. I, I did. She said 206 before she started doodling. Can we see Alana's paper? She actually counted all the bones in the human body. 206. <laughs> Linda? Yes, sir? You have $50,000. Nice work, Kyle. Yes, thank you, Kyle. A little yeah. nervous? I love this game. <laughs> I would think that you would. You have all your cheats left. You have your save left. You've got $50,000. Pick another classmate. I pick Laura. I pick Laura. Laura, come on, Laura. She's hey, Laura. She her. is cute, isn't she? <laughs> nice to have you back. How are you, Laura? You know, I'm fantabulous. How about you? I'm oh. fantabulous, too. <laughs> All right, well, you've got $50,000. Oh You're playing for $100,000. Linda, pick a category. Social studies. Fourth grade social studies. Yes. For $100,000, the question is, uh. how long is one regular term for a U.S. senator? How long is one regular term for a U.S. senator? <laughs> the classmate has locked oh, she's in. Done. I know it's different than the House of Representatives. They're longer. I want to say the senators are, are shorter, like two years or something. Um, now, here's the good news. What's my good? Oh, tell me good You've news. You've got all your cheats left. Which is You can lovely. copy her paper. You can peek at her paper. She answered quickly. You can also guess if you're incorrect and she's correct, you stay on. 
Or you can take $50,000 and leave right now. Ooh, that's a lot of money. I want to guess two. And so if I'm wrong, then I'm banking that she'll save me. A regular term for U.S. Senators, two. You said how long is one regular term for a U.S. Senator? You said two. I will tell you right now, two is incorrect. Let's see what Laura said. Oh, Laura. <laughs> Laura said the term for a U.S. Senator is six oh, it's years. Six. She's right. And she's right. Did six years? Yeah, I think When you that saw it ring right. a bell? Maybe the House of Representatives was two years. It's six years. She's right. You she's got right. 100. <laughs> That. Thank you for being smart. <laughs> you got $100,000. We're playing for $175,000. Pick a subject, Linda. Yes, Can I ask Laura what I she's good, good at? at grammar. You're what? Good at grammar. I will tell you this. I think Laura is probably gooder at grammar than anybody in the class. <laughs> then I'm going to go with fourth grade grammar. Fourth grade grammar, $175,000. Because Laura said she's good at it. Here is the question. Okay. True or false, or and but are examples of interjections. True or false, or and but are examples of interjections. Interjections are like, hey, and things with exclamation points. Your classmate has just locked in. Now, the good news is it's true or false. You got a 50 50 chance. The bad news is mm -hmm. right now you got $100,000. If you're wrong, you drop down to $25,000. If you're right, you're up to $175,000. Yikes. Big difference between $175 and $25. I know. My answer no. Well, <laughs> no, I'm saying you're, 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 you're changing your mind more than a dog at a Christmas tree I farm am. right now. <laughs> True, false, or $100,000? What's it going to be, Linda? Um, I'm going to use one of my cheats and peek over at Miss Laura. All right. True or false, or and but are examples of interjections. Laura said false. OK. And I agree with Laura that the answer is false. <laughs> OK. <laughs> yes. Yes. That's correct. You got 175000 <laughs> when we come back. We're back to Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader? Our contestant, Linda Sipian, has $175,000. You still have Amazing. one of your cheats left. You're playing for $300,000. And you're down to your last classmate, Spencer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's ready. Spencer, how are you today, buddy? Good. All right. How are you feeling about history and measurements? Good. A lot on the line. We're playing for $300,000. You have one cheat left. <gasps> Linda, which one of the final two subjects would you like? History! 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 history. Are you good at history? Oh. Really, you are? Spencer says U.S. history. I'm going with U.S. history. U.S. history. OK. Our $300,000 question is, after Washington, Adams and Jefferson, who was the fourth 
President of the United States. After Washington, Adams and Jefferson, who was the fourth President of the United States? All right, let me tell you something to think about. Right now, you got 175,000. Yes. If you should get this answer wrong, you're going to drop down to 25,000. Which is icky. Yeah. That's a drop of $150,000. Can I practice my song? <laughs> Can you practice your song? I think I could do it. You got something else for this? Yeah, there is a song for this. This is how I remember. This is how I got through college. I got a bachelor's degree from UCLA learning different things like this. By singing? By singing. My aunt taught me stuff, my mom and dad, so. Okay. It helps. They were teachers, so. Spencer has locked in his answer. Uh, um, Washington, Adams, Jefferson, Madison, Madison. Okay. You can walk away right now with $175,000. Okay, I hope I'm not nuts. I think the fourth president of the United States was Madison. <laughs> You've already used the save, which means if you're not right, if the little ditty in your head is not right, no matter what Spencer said, he can't save you. I know. Thankfully, he doesn't have to. It's Madison, and you have $300,000. Oh, my God! You're down to the 10th question on the board. I'm just so happy. All right, Linda. It's fifth grade measurements. I was bad at that, but... For $500,000, you want to hear the question? You know what? I will hear the question. Fifth grade measurements. Okay. The $500,000 question is... Okay. One gallon equals how many pints? Huh. One gallon equals how many pints? You got a little ditty for that no, one? No, but there's like... A little rhyme, a little song. I, you know what's bad is I don't cook. So if I was a cook, I would know this answer off the top of my head. But if there's like... He's already done. He locked in quickly. He did, didn't he? $300,000. Okay, off the top of my head, I'm thinking eight. You have one cheat left. You have a copy. Okay, let me just figure. Two cups and a pint, two pints and a quart, four quarts and a gallon, which would make eight. The fact that you're saying this through clenched teeth is making it me nervous. It scares me too, because I think it's eight, two, four cups and a... What do you think Bab would say? You know, I know, what, I can't ask him. He's already, he's already wiped out from this whole experience. <laughs> You know One what? gallon equals how many pints? I, I think it's eight, but because I don't know definitively, I am so happy to leave with my $300,000. I'm very happy. You're dropping out of school. If you had had to guess. Yeah. One gallon equals how many pints? What would you have guessed? I would have guessed eight. And I would have given you $500,000. Oh. But I think you made the smart play. Okay. $300,000. Yay. Remember our one little promise at the start okay. of the day? Yeah. Look into the camera and tell the world. I guess I'm not smarter than a fifth grader, but I am smart enough to know when to leave. She's smart enough to know when to leave. She's got $300,000. We'll see you next time on Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader? class. Hi, I am Jeff Foxworthy, and this is the show where we give grown-ups the chance to win one million dollars. 
All they have to do is prove that they're smarter than a fifth grader. It's that easy. All right, let me introduce you to our class. We have Kyle, Jacob, Alana, Spencer, and Marky. All right, guys, you ready to meet our new student? She is a 28-year-old sales rep who attended Dillard Elementary School. Please welcome Maria Brunker. Hello, Maria. How are you? Welcome to our class. Thank you. Are you nervous? Extremely. Are you really? Yes. It's okay. Everybody here is really nice. Really nice. Look at this hair. Those were my finest years. You still kind of get, you had big hair then, you I got did. big hair now. I did, I did. <laughs> now you're a sales rep for? Hershey. Her, yeah, guy, Hershey. <laughs> Hershey. Candy, cookies. Yes, that, yes, all that good stuff. You could be a friend of this classroom, all right? <laughs> Let me tell you how we're going to play this game. These guys are going to be taking the same quiz that you are taking, and actually, during the course of the game, we're going to let you cheat off them, so pick one classmate, and let's get started. Oh, 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 oh. Come on up, Alana. Hi. She's with Hershey. We're going to be very nice to her, all right? Very nice. if, we, if we're nice to you, you're going to be nice in return? Absolutely. Okay, we like that. <laughs> I love chocolate. Alana said she loves chocolate. All right, let me tell you how we play this game. On the board, there is a quiz that consists of 10 questions. They range from first grade through the fifth grade. The first question is worth $1,000. The 10th one is worth $500,000. If you get past all 10 of these, we will give you an 11th question. It is from grade school. The correct answer on it is worth $1 million. It's that easy. Now, if any point during the quiz you decide that it's too tough, you can drop out of school with all the money you've earned to that point. Okay. But there's one stipulation. You have to look into the camera and tell the world I am not smarter than a fifth grader. Will do. Will do. Will do? Yes. Won't right. do. Won't do. Well, I'm winning the won't million. Won't do. See? <laughs> I like it. I like it. All right, let's find out. Is Maria Brunker smarter than a fifth grader? All right, Maria, pick your first subject. Okay. What's your favorite subject? Social studies. Social studies? And geography. And geography? Okay. And chocolate. And chocolate. And chocolate. <laughs> Unfortunately, okay. it's not one of the subjects. I'm gonna go with second grade astronomy. Second grade astronomy. <laughs> All right, may we please see the $1,000 question. The planet Earth is located in what galaxy? The planet Earth is located in what galaxy? Your classmate Alana has locked in her answer. How are you feeling about this, Maria? I'm actually feeling really confident um, about this question. So I'm going to straight out and say it. I think my answer is going to be the Milky Way galaxy. And that's my answer. I know it's not Hershey, but the Milky Way is <laughs> made out of chocolate as well. So you should be able to get this one right. The question was, the planet Earth is located in what galaxy? You said Milky Way. Alana said Milky Way. You're both right. You have $1,000. See how easy this is, Maria? It is. I feel so less nervous now. Yeah. See, you got the first one out of the way. Pick another subject. Let's make it 2,000. Okay. I am going. I'm going to go with Alana's favorite subject and go with fourth grade world geography. Fourth grade world geography. All right. Here is the $2,000 question. What is the capital of Sweden? Got very quiet in here. 
What is the capital of Sweden? While Alana writes her answer down, let me tell you how your classmates can help you. Okay. Once during the course of the game, you may peek at your classmates' paper. If you like their answer, you can go with it. Once during the game, you may copy your classmates' paper, and you have one save, which means once during the game, if you answer incorrectly, but your classmate at the podium has the right answer, you win the money, and you continue on, all right? Awesome. Alana has locked in her answer. How you feeling, Maria? I am feeling wishy-washy on this one. I think that I might know it, but I'm going to take a peek at Alana's paper. Okay. All right. I, I want to peek. I want to peek. <laughs> All right, Maria, the question is, what's the capital of Sweden? Your 10-year-old classmate said Stockholm. You know what? I'm a bad speller, too. Oh, I'm a, I, <laughs> I'm a terrible speller. I don't even know if that's spelled incorrectly, to be honest with you. No. <laughs> Just looks weird. I know what she uh, means, and I'm going to take her answer. You like that? I do. I'm going to say the answer is Stockholm, and that's going to be my answer. She's right. You got $2,000. Before, before you clear the board, I want you to show Jacob's answer. I, I love this. What is the capital of Sweden? Jacob said, Swedishville. <laughs> That's an answer I would have given in school. All right, Maria, pick another student. How are you, Spencer? I'm doing good. Are you a fan of chocolate as well? I really like chocolate. <laughs> All right. I'll pick another subject. So, Spencer, what are your two favorite subjects? Your two favorites. Earth science and cultural studies. Earth science and cultural studies. OK. I am actually going to go out on my own this time, and I'm going to go with first grade music. First grade music? Do you play an instrument? I don't, but I grew up in a pretty musical family. My mom plays the guitar. My dad likes to sing in the shower, so. <laughs> I play the radio. I'm pretty good at that. Uh, all right. Your $5,000 question, first grade music. Here it is. What national hymn written by Katherine Lee Bates contains the lyrics from sea to shining sea? What national hymn written by Katherine Lee Bates contains the lyrics from sea to shining sea? All right, your classmate Spencer has locked in his answer. How are you feeling about this? If you would let me sing it for you, I could definitely sing this song. And I'm questioning the name of it. You want to sing it? No. You, <laughs> Absolutely not. You can sing it if you want to. Do I if it helps you. It'll help you. Uh, $5,000. But I think I know the name of it. I'm going to say that the name of the song is America the Beautiful. And that's going to be my answer. Give me, give me a few bars. How does the song go? Oh, beautiful for space. That's guys. enough. That's <laughs> enough. Let's see what the class had to say. America the Beautiful. Jacob even knows what year it was written in. They're right, you're right, you got $5,000. That's starting to get interesting. You got $5,000, we're playing for $10,000. Who do you have cheering you on here today? My little brother, Mario. Mario! <laughs> you realize your brother has a giant pair of dirty tennis shoes in his lap? Yes. My dad was an assistant coach with the Detroit Pistons when I was born. Oh, wow. um, and one of his players named Bob Lanier gave him those shoes, and those have sort of been my lucky charm. And so they're size 26. I, can so I borrow one huge. one second? A 20, <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Stick your foot out, Spencer. 
That's what, that's what I'm <laughs> talking about. Nice. <laughs> All right, Spencer's got some big shoes to fill. Nice. We'll be playing for $10,000 when we come back. Fifth grader, our contestant Maria Brunker's yeah. got five thousand dollars. She's playing for ten thousand. <laughs> your brother brought your lucky shoes, yes. which were worn by Bob Lanier, size twenty-six, and your your classmate Spencer is actually wearing it here at the podium. For good luck. You don't hang that from your rearview mirror, do you? No. <laughs> Knock yourself out. <laughs> All right, we are playing for $10,000. Pick another subject, Maria. I am going to go with third grade cultural studies. Third grade cultural studies. The $10,000 question is, what was the name of the Egyptian god of the sun? Ra, Hathor, or Ramses? What was the name of the Egyptian god of the sun? Ra, Hathor, or Ramsey? Your classmate Spencer has locked in his answer. Maria, with a tan like yours, you should know this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I am fairly confident of my answer on this, so I'm gonna say that my answer is Ra. My answer. <laughs> The Egyptian god of the sun is Ra. You have $10,000. Your classmates could only help you two questions at a time, so it's time to pick another one. And I think I have to go with Marky. Marky, come on up. We're playing for $25,000. It's a big number on the board yes. because up until this point, if you're incorrect and nobody saves mm -hmm. you, you go home with nothing. You get this question okay. right, the minimum you leave us with is $25,000, okay? okay? So pick a subject. What are your two best subjects? I love math, so math? I guess. And what else? Um, I like second grade measurements. Okay, so let's go with first grade math. First grade math. For $25,000, here's the question. Which of the following is the smallest? One third, one fourth, or one half? Which of the following is the smallest? One third, one fourth, or one half? Okay, your classmate Marky has locked in her answer. What are you thinking here? Well, Thank God this isn't fifth grade math because <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have to say that my answer is going to be B, one fourth. You're sure about that? I am sure. It's not unanimous in the classroom but I'm smarter than the classroom. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> Let me give you a piece of advice. Don't make them angry, okay? I'm not. <laughs> to try to help you here. The question, which of the following is the smallest, one third, one fourth, or one half? You said B, one fourth. You're right, you have $25,000. The correct answer is B, one fourth. Wow. Wow. I'm gonna that cry. got you a little yeah, teary eyed, did. didn't it? Oh my gosh. Now, were you a good student growing up? I, I was a good student. Oh, see? And, and now look where you are. You got $25,000. You're playing for $50,000. All right, Maria, pick a subject. I'm going to go with second grade measurements. Second grade measurements. The $50,000 question is, 
A U.S. month will have a Friday the 13th if the first of the month is on what day of the week? A U.S. month will have a Friday the 13th if the first day of the month is on which day of the week? You look like we're about to have a seance here, you know? <laughs> Classmate Marky has locked in her answer. What are you thinking, Maria? I am thinking that my answer is going to be Tuesday. And that is going to be my answer. All right. You said Tuesday. I will tell you, Tuesday is not the right answer. The only way you stay in the game is if Marky saves you. Let's see what Marky said. Marky said, Wednesday. Let me walk around the classroom. Can we see it on the board what the rest of the class had to say? Monday, Tuesday, Sunday, Monday. <laughs> we have the week covered. Only one of the five kids have the right answer. You're hoping that it's Marky. I'm sorry to tell you, it is Jacob. Correct answer is a U.S. month. We'll have a Friday the 13th if the first day of the month is on what day of the week? It is Sunday. But you still got $25,000. That's awesome. You still have your lucky, stinky yes. sneakers. Yes. But remember our deal, when you came in into the classroom, yes. before you leave us, we'll let you go home with 25,000, but. My name is Maria, I am college educated, I have a job, but I am definitely not smarter than a fifth grader. <laughs> we'll be back right after this. Welcome back to Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader? Are you guys ready to meet your new classmate? Yeah. He is a 27-year-old Army Ranger who attended Lincoln Elementary. Please welcome Dylan Banks. Give me some love. Bring it in. Bring it in. I'll count to one, two, three, go. We're gonna get it. We're gonna get it. Come on, Dylan. Welcome oh, to the good, show. So it says you attended West Point. I did. A physics major at West Point. Yeah. That's so you were probably pretty good back in grade school. Look, you haven't changed one bit, man. <laughs> Very cool. Well, let me tell you, the class here is going to be taking the same quiz that you're taking. And actually, we're going to let you cheat off of them during the course of the game. So pick one of them and let's get started, okay? Who wants to go? We all want to go. We're going to go back there. Marky. Marky, come on. Yay, Marky. All right. Let me tell you how this works, Dylan. On the board. You're going to see 10 subjects. They range from first grade through the fifth grade. Your first correct answer is worth $1,000. The 10th question, should you answer it correctly, is worth $500,000. <laughs> you ace this test, we are going to give you an additional grade school question that will be worth $1 million. <laughs> I know you went to West Point, but if at any point our little quiz gets to be too difficult, you may drop out of school and take the money you've earned and run. But before you leave, we got to have a little deal. You got to promise to look into that camera and tell the world, I am not smarter than a fifth grader. I promise. My All own. right, we My got own. a deal. All right, let's find out is Dylan Mack smarter than a fifth grader? All right, Dylan, select your first subject. Third grade math. Third grade math. Smarty fans here jumps right to the third grade. <laughs> Good luck, man. You don't look nervous. You look very calm. Oh, I've been in tough situations. Well, yeah, you were a ranger, right? That's right. So this is not scary. This is actually a scary. This is scary. <laughs> so how long have you been in the Army? Uh, nine years, if you Nine years. Yeah. Wow. OK. All right, Dylan, the $1,000 question is, 
How many degrees are in a quarter of a circle? How many degrees are in a quarter of a circle? Your classmate Marky has locked in her answer. What are you thinking? Because on here it says math was your best subject. Definitely. Okay. Definitely. So I'm going to say 90 degrees. Boom! You're not messing around. No, not with math. Not with math. I'm bringing it. How many degrees are in a quarter of a circle? Yeah. A quarter of a circle. A quarter 360. You're right. You got $1,000. <laughs> So How many degrees are in a quarter of a, a quarter circle? circle? It is 90, because there are 360 degrees in a complete circle. All right, so you got $1,000. Let's double it. Let's get 2,000. Pick another subject. Okay, second grade animal science. Second grade animal science. science. How are you, Marky? I'm doing mine. I'm doing mine. The $2,000 question is, True or false, the emu is a flightless bird. True or false, the emu is a flightless bird. What is the point in being a flightless bird? Marky has locked in her answer. What do you think, Dylan? I think I know this one. You think you know this one? I know I know this one. You know you know this one. In second grade, I'm very proud of you for... Okay. True. ...for being so confident. True. I like your confidence. Let's see what your classmate Marky said. True or false, the emu is a flightless bird. Marky said... True, it can't fly. Right. You're both right. You got $2,000. That's what we're talking. Way to come back. All right, Marky's got to return to the classroom. They can oh, you were great. Give me a <laughs> question. Trying to pick another class we week, Dylan. I'm going to stick with the back. I'm going to stick with the back and go Kyle. Kyle, come on up Get here, over Kyle. Here. Get over here. Warrior your spirit, Kyle. Warrior your spirit. How are you feeling today, Kyle? I'm feeling good. We're playing for 5,000. Select a subject, Dylan. Fourth grade U.S. history. Fourth grade U.S. history. Yeah. Okay. Woo! Woo! Getting up into the nine-year-old questions, baby. <laughs> For $5,000, here is the question. Before he eventually became president of the United States, Harry Truman was a senator representing what state? Before he eventually became president of the United States, Harry Truman was a senator representing what state? Your classmate Kyle has locked in his answer. I don't know. You're not blurting quite as no, quickly, I, Dylan. No, not my subjects. <laughs> I am going Went to. From cocky to use quiet very quickly. My cheek, Jeff. Okay, you've got a peek and a copy, and you still have your save left. I'm going like to use the answer. copy. The copy means you have to go with the answer he wrote down. You're copying. You got a copy? We're not wasting time today. I, I have no idea. I should know this. All right, well, you're putting it all on Kyle's little shoulders. If you had had to guess, what would you have guessed? Because you got a 1 in 50 shot. Uh, Truman seemed like he was from Delaware. Delaware? The first state. Dylan. Your mom's here? My mom's here. Mom, if you had had to guess, what would you say? I would have said Missouri. It's too bad your mom's not up here because your mom is right. Yeah. Well, Moms some are some always them. right. Too bad you can't copy off your mom. You have elected to copy off of Kyle, a 10-year-old boy. <laughs> For $5,000, can we see if Kyle said Missouri? Missouri! I'll take that, my man, my man. Oh, God. 
That's why you gotta love gotta here, man. Troops. You know you gotta know. Yeah, you do. You you know your guys here. Thankfully, spelling does not count in this classroom. <laughs> All right, you guys, you've got five thousand dollars. We are playing for ten thousand dollars. Pick another subject, Dylan. I'm gonna go first grade U.S. geography. First grade U.S. geography. All right, Dylan. The ten thousand dollar question is. Coming up right after this. Welcome back to Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader? Our contestant, Dylan Mack, has got $5,000. You have selected first grade U.S. geography for the $10,000 question. Dylan, here is the question. What U.S. state is nicknamed the Lone Star State? What U.S. state is nicknamed the Lone Star State? Your classmate Kyle has locked in. What deep, you thinking? Deep in the heart of Texas. You're right. We got ten thousand dollars, Dylan. Way to go, Kyle. Way to go. I needed you, man. I owe you. I owe you, buddy. Nice work, Kyle. Who do we have to go? All right, pick up with Jacob. Man. Jacob, come on out. Going down the road. Wear your spirit. Wear your spirit, Jacob. All right, Jacob. We got six subjects left. If you had to pick one, which one do you think's your favorite? Whoa. Uh. It's hard to pick. Probably health. Probably. You like fourth grade help? Yeah. That's good. But I'm gonna go with first grade spelling. You selected first grade spelling. Big question on the board, because if you had flunked out of school up until this point, you would have left us with nothing. You get this question right. The minimum amount you're gonna walk out of here with is $25,000. Big question. All right, gentlemen. The $25,000 question is, how many times does the letter A appear in the following phrase? Niagara Falls. How many times does the letter A appear in Niagara Falls? Jacob has locked in his answer. with three. One of the people up here agree with you. No, more than that. Was it Kyle? It was. <laughs> All right. It was Kyle. We're together on this, you know? We're <laughs> Kyle said... Three. All right, if we look up on the big chalkboard, I'm about to show you how Niagara Falls is spelled. One, two, three, four. How are we doing, Mom? I'm, I missed it. Dylan, you're over a barrel. Yeah. Because the only thing that can keep you here is the save. Okay. Meaning, if Jacob has the right answer, you get the 25000 and we keep going. Yeah. What do you think? I think he's got it. You think he's got I it? I think he's got it. For $25,000, let's see what Jacob said. right after this. Welcome back to Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader? Our contestant, Dylan Mack, has got $10,000. The question, how many times does the letter A appear in the following phrase? Niagara Falls. 
Your answer was three, but as we saw before the break, the correct answer is four. And lucky for you, you still have a save. If Jacob has the right answer, you get the 25,000 and we keep going. Yeah. How many times does the letter A appear in Niagara Falls? Did Jacob write four? My man. I, that, man. I, got I know it right. that. I believe that. Woo. All right. All right. Good happy days. Sometimes happy days. it's nice to have friends, isn't it? Woo. Pick a subject. Let's play for 50,000. I'm going to go with uh, second grade grammar. Second grade grammar. The $50,000 question is, what is the verb in the following sentence? It is such a nice day. What is the verb in the following sentence? It is such a nice day. And $50,000 would make it a nice day. Your classmate Jacob has locked in. You've got one cheat left. You could peek at Jacob's paper. What happens if you get caught cheating at West Point? <laughs> Not good. No we'll let you peek at his paper. OK, well, is is a form of to do, which is an action. So I'm going to say is. But I'm not so good at this. This is not, I'm not, I'm not playing. I did not know that very well. You're not playing, are you? No, I really don't know these things. <laughs> I.S. Very small word with a lot of money riding on it. You said is is a form of to do. Well, guess what? That's not true. Is is a form of to be. But it is what it is. You got $50,000. Whoa. Oh, Jacob, Jacob, you got to return to your Ray, seat. Come on. Give it to me. You've been wonderful. Whew. You got that warrior spirit, kids. Pick another classmate. Let's knock two more of them off. We'll go, Alana. I'll get it. We'll go Alana. Alana. Come on up here, Alana. <laughs> do it. We'll do it. All right, Alana, we have four subjects left. Which one would be your favorite? Geography. Geography. Mm. Fifth grade question, though, Dylan. What are you thinking? Well, what about social studies? Yes. Let's do social studies, then we'll do geography. We'll go third grade social studies. Third grade social studies. <laughs> I think that's very wise, avoiding the tougher fifth grade questions. <laughs> the $100,000 question is, which is not a member of the US presidential cabinet, Secretary of Education, Attorney General, White House Press Secretary, which is not a member of the U.S. Presidential Cabinet, Secretary of Education, Attorney General, or White House Press Secretary. Classmate Alana just locked in. Okay. What are you thinking? White House Press Secretary. Without a doubt. Wow. How are you feeling? Doing all right? Okay. Dylan, what makes you so confident about that one? I, some things I know, some things I don't. <laughs> you know what I know? What's that? You have $100,000. We did it. We did it. This is a good day at school. This is a good day at school. Good day at school. You're playing for $175,000. What do you think, Dylan? What subject? You feeling good geography? I'm going fifth grade world geography. Fifth grade world geography. 
The $175,000 question is coming up right after this. Smarter than a fifth grader. Our contestant Dylan Mack has got one hundred thousand dollars. You have selected fifth grade world geography. The one hundred and seventy-five thousand dollar question is: The Gobi Desert is located on which continent? The Gobi Desert is located on which continent? You have one cheek left. I thought I knew this. The entire game, you've been slapping that button very quickly. Let's not do that right now, all right? They probably taught you in the Rangers. Sometimes you want to charge in, sometimes you want to take your time. They're also both in Africa, I believe. Your classmate has locked in her answer. Now, let me tell you your options here. You can walk away right now with $100,000. Because if you answer the question incorrectly, you're going to drop down to $25,000. You're going to be given back $75,000, OK? But if you answer it right, you're at 175,000 and getting close to the million dollar question. Okay. What's going through your head right now, Dylan? Uh, I, I believe it's also in Africa. You believe? I believe, I, I haven't been there. Not one of the requirements. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff, I'm gonna peek. You wanna peek? For $175,000, Alana said the Gobi Desert is located where? North America. That ain't right. Says you. <laughs> <laughs> what are you thinking now, Dylan? Let's just be careful. Cause you peaked, you cannot walk away. She said North America. You can go with that, or you can go with your own answer. You don't like North America. No. I, I got, I got, the Sahara was up in the north, and I thought the Gobi was down south. And uh, it's not, oh. we'll go Africa. Boom! All right, Dylan, you put it all on the line. All right, let's see what the rest of the class said. You said Africa. The class said Africa. What's going on with the North America? <laughs> Don't make fun of her because she was wrong. Because you were also wrong. Oh, all right. The right answer is Asia. Is Asia. The Gobi Desert is located I in Asia. I knew that. It's so close. Dylan, hey, you gorgeous. gave back 75000 but you still have 25000 yeah. All right, Dylan, remember, we had a little deal. Before you leave us, look in the camera and tell the world. My name is Dylan Mack. I'm a U.S. Army Ranger, and I'm not smarter than a fifth grader. We'll see you next time. Goodbye, everybody. And Dylan, I think you owe Alana an apology because you were both wrong.